Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to do a CAD tutorial to show you how I modelled my 3D printed arc reactor. If you go to my website and scroll down a bit and find the 3D printed arc reactor prop section, you can see some pictures of what I've modelled so far and also some pictures of the pieces I've printed. So, I uh, used Autodesk 123D to do this. Um, this is free software from Autodesk, which you can download for absolutely nothing. This is version 1.3.15, which is the latest version at the time of making this video. So, here's my 3D model. Um, basically, it's designed to look like the arc reactor from the first movie, although some of the pieces aren't quite movie accurate, uh, because I want to 3D print them on a home printer, so some of the parts are uh, simplified and a bit more chunky, so that it can be printed more easily. Now this piece sitting off to the side here on the right um, is basically intended to fit into each of these ten sections and that's the piece that the wire gets wrapped around um, as it was in the movie. So the uh, ring here as well as having these indents for the saddles also has some holes from the bottom so that we can put LEDs in there to illuminate it and those LEDs hide behind the saddles so hopefully they'll diffuse through the plastic this is going to be printed in clear PLA. So if we just uh, get rid of that, then we can see the other pieces. So we've got this rather iconic sort of tri piece. Again, there are there are fewer holes in this one than there should be, so that um, it's easier to print. And also the gold section, in fact, should be tapered, so these outer rings should be higher. But in mine, they're all level, so it's easier to print without support material on the flatbed of the printer. The base has another clear part, which is this diffuser. Um, so we can put some LEDs in the base and there's a hole for the wire to go out. And then these rings, obviously if they were permanently attached, it'd be hard to print because they're floating in the air. So these are separate pieces that get printed and put on later. And that leaves us with this sort of uh, rather spiky looking base with 10 segments to match the 10 segments of the ring. And if we put all those pieces back on, uh, all the spiky bits are basically to hold the pieces in place, so the main ring rests on there, and that ring I just removed rests in that groove. And, you know, these all rest, whoops, rest on uh, various parts of the chassis. So, now I'm going to show you how I modelled the outer ring. So, let's start with a blank sheet. Um, basically, we're going to put down um, from the primitives menu a cylinder. Um, first of all, it asks you for the radius. You can just type in there. So I want that to be uh, 40 mil, so it's 80 mil diameter, and I want the height to be 15. And then if we just we can move it around. I'm just going to click that down, so that we've got the thing there. If we click on this one over here, which says fit, that puts it into the middle, so everything spins around. And if you use the right hand mouse button, the cursor turns into this spinning thing. And as you move the mouse, you can, you know, move it all around. So, um, obviously we need um, a ring with a hole in the middle. So the next thing is to use the drawing tool, find circle, and make another ring in the middle. So I want to make this about 20 mil thick. So I'm going to make that a 60 mil diameter. So we've got our cylinder with a circle drawn on top. And then I'm going to split the solid, use a split solid tool, which is here with modify, split solid, select the solid I want to split, click on splitting entity and select the circle and it immediately puts this red splitting tool on. And if we press enter we should find, we can delete the circle and now we should be able to independently select the inner and outer. If we select the inner one and press delete, we can delete it. And that gives us this rather uh, pleasing circle. So, um, in the example I showed you, we had some indents. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly on that with the zoom tool. Um, and we need to somehow put 10 of those on, which um, will be at a 36 degree spacing, because there's 10 of them in 360 degrees. So what we can do, um, again, is draw with the drawing tool. We're going to draw a square. And we're going to draw that on the grids there, so it's 10mm wide. 
And then we're going to use another splitting tool called Split Face. So that's again on the Modify menu. We'll select the top face this time. The splitting entity is this square I've drawn. And that projects a splitting tool onto that top face only. And if we press Enter, uh, we should be find that we've got a split there. Um, and then we can select just that face. and use the press pull tool. So when you select a face, this other menu pops up with some options and we're going to use the press pull tool to pull that down. So I'm just gonna type in that box minus three and that'll pull that section down by three mils. So we've got this uh, a kind of indent there. So it's gonna be quite hard to draw um, 10 of these boxes exactly at 36 degrees all the way around. So what we're gonna do instead is rotate the piece and keep this sketch of a square in one place um, and then go around splitting the face. So what we need to do first is select this solid and at the bottom a series of things pop up. One of those is move and then we get this sort of coordinate thing where we can move it in different directions and we can rotate it. So we need to find the one for rotating and we can type in 36 degrees and then you'll see the indented part moves around we press enter it will stay there and then again we can do the split face on the remaining face and split that again and then we can rotate this object round by 36 degrees again use the split face tool and basically keep doing that again and again. Uh, once we've drawn all of them we can select them by pressing control and clicking on them or doing them one at a time and again the little menu pops up do press pull and we can do minus three or whatever you want if I obviously put a bigger number in they'll go down further so for now we use three mil you can pull them out as well if you wanted so I'll do minus three and um, that's it, and then we just need to keep going around the whole circle till we've done 10 of them. So I've done all 10 of my indents, and now I'm just gonna flip this over the other way, and we need to put the holes in for the LEDs. So um, we're gonna do a very similar thing where we're just gonna draw on the bottom, so we're gonna select the circle tool, and we're going to put a hole in here, which we're gonna make 5.1 mil, so it's big enough for a five mil LED. Um, again, we're going to split the face. And rotate the piece around, obviously we'll do this 10 times, so 36 degrees. Um, I'm not gonna do every one of them because it's basically the same as before, but once we've got this split, we can use press and pull again, and we can make that however deep we want. Let's say 10 mil. And that gives us a hole. So uh, just to make that a bit more clear, if we select the whole piece and select material, um, we can do frosted glass, click apply overlay, and that makes the piece clear. So there you are, you can see the hole. Um, we're just going to zoom right in on that. The other thing we can do to round the corners off to make them easier to print is select the edge and then select fill it and we can put in basically two and a half mil and that should put a nice rounded top on it. So obviously we rotate that around 10 times, 36 degrees each time, split the face, press and pull, pull the hole and put the fillet in and that's how we make that piece. So for both the black and gold pieces in the centre middle um, with the sort of tri star sort of shape on there and we can do a very similar thing to the main ring so I've put down a cylinder here that's three mil high um, again I've used the circle tool to draw circles on it and then I've used the split solid tool to split on each one of those so now these are all independent parts so I can delete some of them, and that leaves me three concentric rings. Now, to uh, put in the bits that link them together, I'm just gonna use a box placed about there, 
Um, I think I want it to be 5 mil wide and 3 mil high to match. I'll just put that down. Let's put it on top. So we need to just move that with the moving tool. So we pick that up and down arrow. We can drag that down 3 mil, or we could type minus 3 in. Um, that places it there. So then we've got this other tool called group, uh, Combine where these, this menu pops up you can basically hold control and click on the pieces one by one then press enter and it combines them all into one so to get the other three legs on best thing to do is again rotate this round so um, a third of 360 is 120 not in that direction though Like that um, and then we can do the same thing uh, put down this box so five move it down again minus three and we can go and combine that in again and then obviously we do it again and we can put in the third leg Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I designed the central core part of this, which is the cylinder with all the spiky parts on. So it's very similar to the other parts in that we draw a piece and rotate it round. So I'm going to draw um, a cylinder, which I think I want to be about this big. And we're going to draw a... Uh, a box next to it. And I think it wants to be about something like that. So what we're going to do is split this piece up to make the uh, right angle arms with the jaggedy bits on. So we're going to do sketch and polyline and then we're just going to draw all over this piece however you wish. I can't remember exactly what the shape was but th this is the basic principle. And then we can use the again modify split solid to split this thing in half. There we go. So um, we need to merge these two pieces together. So as you'd imagine, we'll select it, select move, slide it across. And then we'll use the combine tool again to combine both of these pieces. And now we've got one. At some point, we can go back and clean up all these white lines. But never mind for now. So. Uh, what we need to do is make 10 of these though. So we need to uh, effectively, um, we don't want to have to draw it 10 times, so we're going to copy and paste it basically. If you select the piece and use the Control C and Control V keys as normal to copy and to paste, it doesn't appear to do anything other than the moving tool pops up. But if you move one of these and we put in 36 degrees, you'll see now there are two copies. However, it rotates around the absolute centre, and because this piece is stuck on the side, um, the centre isn't the centre of the cylinder, so it's uh, moved it off centre. So what we'll have to do is rotate it 180 degrees, um, and then we'll have to slide this one backwards, so or forwards. So we have to get these um, kind of aligned, which I think is actually. Here's to be um, 24 and a half millimeters. There we go. And now we've got two of them. So we can use the combine tool again to combine those. And now we can actually copy and paste. And if we move 36 degrees with the correct tool, then that's all fine. And then we can do that again copy and paste and rotate round and we can make the uh, five copies to give us the pieces that we need there so we can do that five times to get our ten spikes to mount all the pieces on. So uh, basically I'm not going to model any more of the pieces right now in this tutorial. Um, hopefully it's a kind of an overview of how to use Autodesk 123D design um, and from that you should be able to work out how to model an arc reactor for yourself. Um, so basically I'd say get hold of the software because it is free and you can download it for free. And then basically uh, you can 
have a go and if you get stuck you can come on post in the X Robots forums which you'll find linked from every page but it's this big button uh, basically which says forums and there's some discussion forums and you can post questions and things in there and I'll see if I can help you and next time I'll be actually 3D printing this arc reactor in plastic and assembling it that's all for now